difficulty. Off and turn it back on. Check one, two, three. Welcome everybody. Is the American Space Museum is having a technical difficulty? Okay. Well, let's reset. Welcome you to the American Space Museum as I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad that you visited us here at our Hyatt Place Studios inside the American Space Museum in downtown Titusville. We're just 11 miles away from where the Artemis rocket is, is now poised on pad 39B. And here's a Saturn V rocket on my stage here, not only to remind me of my Grumman lunar module worker that worked on the lunar modules in the Apollo era, but my friend and co-producer Marty Winkles behind the scenes with our Streamlabs computer setup to bring you some, uh, some great visuals and talk about space history today. Marty and I are getting back to our roots that we started with 543 episodes ago is when we started Stay Curious two years born out of the pandemic. So stay tuned with us. Uh, we wanted to show you the Hyatt Place Studios. This is where you can see a rocket launch on their fifth floor. It looks quite beautiful up there. And we just concluded our uh, uh, shuttle fest. Folks, grab a chair and you can sit down and watch our Stay Curious video podcast here that we're doing live right now. We've got friends that are on YouTube, Twitch, Spotify, and, of course, Facebook Live all over the world. We appreciate everybody watching our event this Saturday, and I'm going to show you some pictures of it at the end of our program today. And then uh, Friday with Triple T, we'll give you a big recap of what happened uh, where we promised you two astronauts, four astronauts showed up, and uh, we just had a great time and have kicked off what we hope will be uh, an, an annual event that we're calling Shuttle Fest. So... But let's get with some space history behind me is the shuttles of April. 16 shuttles were launched in the month of April. That included 95 uh, uh, passengers, 95 astronauts rode those 16 shuttles for a total of 121 days, 54 million miles. That would get them from about Earth to the planet Mercury and Mars if when Mars is close to, to Earth. So uh, we enjoy sharing with you these shuttles every month uh, uh ov99 challenger had three of the uh, of the missions uh three of its 10 flights were in the month of april actually for ov99 challenger columbia had four discovery five atlantis two and endeavor two missions there and we're going to look at them a couple of those missions here in a little detail in a minute but first we wanted to kick off the space history to not, not never forget, of course, our Apollo program. And 52 years ago, on April 17th, Apollo 13 landed safely. And uh, after a near disaster, this is the Apollo 13 command module in Hutchinson, Kansas, uh, at the Cosmosphere. Beautiful picture I made a few years back of it in there. Looking, It's all encased and everything in there. Uh, and this is the actual module, and the only thing left, Marty, from this mighty Saturn V rocket here in front of me. Uh, uh, and where did, where did it go? I guess we got that out of scene there. Okay, that's all right. Leave it the way it is there. We saw it earlier. But just the little tippy top part of was where the command module is of that 360-some foot tall uh, behemoth of a rocket. And then 50 years ago today, Apollo 16 with three astronauts began orbiting the moon in 1972 and there is the command module named casper looking so gorgeous all right uh in huntsville alabama at the u.s rocket center uh we thank you uh delania for for sending us this picture very popular picture on our facebook page i posted in february it got a lot of shares and you can see why Inside the, the the rocket center, Delania Yancey, thank you for this picture. She works there. Uh, Delania, look at the beautiful, it's got a mirror above it and a mirror below it with these little highlights uh, everywhere. I just think that's just a fabulous, the best display of any spacecraft ever is there in Huntsville, Alabama at the U.S. Rocket Center. So, so, so juxtaposed in space history, 
his tragedy and triumph as uh, Apollo 13 came back April 17th, 1970, with the world holding their breath, uh, that they made it back. And, of course, Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes are still alive from that mission. Jack Swigert passed away of cancer uh, about a decade or a couple decades ago. And Apollo 16 here with uh, uh, Ken, uh, Ken Mattingly is 86 and Charlie Duke's 86, the moonwalker Charlie Duke. And John Young is no longer with us. We'll talk more about Apollo 16 on uh, 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 the landing date Thursday is Wednesday is the landing date. Uh, April 20th, and we'll talk about that. April, tomorrow we've got a great guest with uh, Trip Banks with a book he's done, te uh, a children's book about a, a, an elephant that goes to space, Teddy Tusker. That's tomorrow. Thursday we're going to talk about Apollo 16. And Friday the one and only Triple T will be in here with Tales from the White Room, and we'll get some tales from our celebration of the 50th anniversary of the space shuttle being financed by our country. There's Apollo 13 and Apollo 16 again. But in space history, between these two missions, the Russians launched Salyut 1, the world's first space station, in 1971. So Apollo 13 had uh, was a, uh, we brought him back alive. And then February 71 is when we landed Apollo 14 on the moon. And just a couple months later, the Russians launched the first space station, which was a core module type of thing, much like a, one big uh, a trailer, if you would, that was habitable. And so it got people thinking, because this was before the, the last two shuttle uh, Apollo landing missions, did we really need to go back to the moon? Should we be investing our money in space stations? Because here the Russians, again, did a first in space and put the first space station up uh, 51 years ago today called Salyut. Uh, the Salyut program was followed by five more successful launches of seven more stations. Uh, the final module of the program, Zevda, become the core module of our International Space Station. And definitely, these early Russian space stations led to the Mir with our U.S. cooperation with nine dockings at the Mir space station that led to a wonderful cooperation. But Russia also wanted to have a... a a military space station called Almaz, and though they launched tw two of them, they were not as successful. Well, when cosmonauts first went to join the space station they launched, they couldn't dock with it. They couldn't get the door open. It wouldn't dock properly. So they sent that crew back to Earth and uh, sent up another crew. Uh, Salyut 10 failed to dock, and the crew had to abort their mission. So a couple of weeks later, Salyut 11 a crew achieved a successful docking and stayed for 23 days. But then when they returned to Earth, a valve opened up before they got in the Earth's atmosphere and they died of asphyxiation when all their air escaped uh, uh, right before re-entry. And um, so they're the only person to have known to have died in, in outer space, actually. Uh, and so the space station actually burned up before I could send another crew there. But they did spend 23 days up there on this first space station. This was film of the space station retrieved from that fateful uh, landing. They landed everything fine, and when they opened up the hatch, they couldn't understand why they weren't hearing them talk during the landing. And they found out that a valve opened up and the three cosmonauts were asphyxiated. They did not have spacesuits on. The last time that uh, any manned program has ever sent people to space without spacesuits and until the uh, shuttle era. So we have that in history. And another beautiful thing in history happened. Yep, this is Jenny, that little uh, helicopter on Mars that was only supposed to do five flights. And it did its first flight a year ago today, April 19th, 2021. This little thing only measures five and a half by six and a half inches. All right. Seven and a half inches tall. All right. It's a tiny little thing. Uh, that's its fuselage. But its wings are four feet across. And it whips those w wings around with some very fascinating technology in the very thin atmosphere of Mars. And its first flight was today, a year ago. It... Uh, went uh, its flight duration was 40 seconds 39 seconds 
This was the first powered, controlled extraterrestrial flight by an aircraft. And we'll go down in history with the Wright brothers as a successful flight. Well, in one year, Jenny has made 25 successful flights. Just another one over the weekend. Uh, it was designed for five flights. That's all they were going to engineering to do on it. And they had such success that it has now become a scout to go ahead of Perseverance, our, our SUV vehicle-sized rover, uh, to find interesting places where Perseverance will go. So a monumental day in history when the first, uh, uh, first powered aircraft flew on another world in our solar system. Well, we look at the shuttles of April again here. And, of course, right in the middle is, is uh, the beginning of it all on April 12th, Space Transportation System 1 with two astronauts, John Young and John Crippen, flying two days in America's reusable spaceship. That was the big deal, was the space station, space shuttle was reusable except for the external tank and uh, the orbiter and the side uh, the pop bottle rockets, I call them, on the side. But today in space history, down here, right at the lower left, look at that. STS-100 was launched on the 19th. That's today, 21 years ago. All right. And this was a hard hat mission to the space station. Yep. Thank you, Marty. And then on the 24th coming up this week, right beside it, is the launch of the Hubble telescope 32 years ago. Designed to last maybe 15 years with uh, five upgrade missions by astronauts. The last one, though, was in 2001. The Space Hubble Telescope is still outperforming its expectations. And now that we have the Webb Telescope up there with the Hubble, we're going to enjoy a couple years of incredible astronomy like we've never thought we could do. And the Hubble is points its directions by gyroscopes, and the power on those gyroscopes is dying. It doesn't have thrusters on it. That's why it lasted longer, was it actually works by spinning tops and gyroscopes spinning it around. So, uh, but the Hubble telescope is going to celebrate 32 years orbiting the Earth. But let's look at this STS-100 crew. Well, let's look first at shuttles of April. While I tell you in this graphic that uh, myself and my executive director, Karen Conklin, put together, uh, we put this Excel program together to show you as you look down at the bottom on uh, um, April 19th and you draw upwards, we've got one, two, three, four, five space shuttles orbiting Earth. Two of them landed on the 19th, so it was brief that we had 34 humans in space in five missions on April 19th. STS-10. In 2002, was a hard hat mission that landed uh, uh, at 1227 p.m. at Kennedy Space Center with a crew of seven on this date. STS-59 going up there, Marty. There you, there you see 59 in the middle. It's orange. That was a, uh, a, a radar mission lab where they did a lot of uh, radar of underground uh, on Earth places. They found archaeological dig sites that going on now in, in 1994 by this mission. Uh, Linda Godwin was the woman on there. The woman, Most of the names you see there are a cheat sheet for me to remind you of what women were in space on that day. Well, they explained hard hat for, I guess. Pardon me? Explain hard hat mission. Oh, hard hat missions, Marty's asking me, is when this, we use the space station as a truck to go to the space. We use the space shuttle as a truck to build the space station. Over 35 what I call hard hat missions where they took up a girder, an arm, a solar panel, all that sort of stuff. And the astronauts had to actually get out and do spacewalks to build the space station. No, and the analogy is just like a hard hat worker building a skyscraper in some big metropolitan downtown. So uh, thank you, Marty. Uh, for pointing that out. STS-51D there in 1985, that's the green bar. It also landed on this date in history at 8.54 a.m. So right before 9 o'clock in the morning, we had uh, uh, on this date 34 humans in space. And then STS-90 was a neuro lab. That's in the blue in 1998. Kay Heyer was on that. She was the first astronaut to be a space worker at Kennedy Space Center and actually transitioned to an astronaut. And uh, 
STS-100 launched on this date in space history in 2001 with Raffaello. Raffaello was a contained uh, 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 pressurized module that they, they took uh, stuff up to the crew, uh, uh, supplies, and then it was brought back. It was, that was an Italian contribution. And STS-100 had an Italian astronaut uh, named Umberto Guido, his second and last flight. It had a Russian. Let's go to that next slide. There they are. Had a Russian on board, Yuri Lon Lankovic, his first or third flights. Canadian Chris Hadfield, his second or third flights. Chris is a very popular astronaut. He's the third, third one on the right, standing up in the back with the mustache. Uh, popular because he did David Bowie's Space Oddity and the Cupola with his guitar, and he's a big outreach uh, person uh, and, and does uh, actively doing uh, paid uh, lectures. Scott Parazinski, John Phillips, and Jeff Ashby were the Americans on there with Ken Rominger. Romo was making his fifth shuttle flight and his last as a commander, and Romo's got a mustache there in the middle. Uh, there we just celebrated the birthday of John Phillips. He's the gray-haired dude up in the in the back there. So, uh, highest priorities of this mission was installation and activation of the space station remote manipulator arm. And here you see one of my favorite patches of the whole space shuttle era, STS-100. It reflects the complex interaction of robotics and extravehicular activity on this mission. In fact, an EVA, extravehicular activity, an EVA helmet is the outline and the frame of the whole thing. You see that now, don't you, that I pointed it out to you. And then the helmet is the reflection of the Earth and sunrise or sunset and space station in the distance with the space shuttle reflected in the helmet with Raffaello there in the cargo bay. Uh, and the American, Russian, Canadian, and Italian flags are all represented on this. And how about the 10 stars, Marty? There's always hidden meaning in, 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 in patches, and there's 10 stars there. And you think, 10? Well, they only have seven on the crew. Yes, well, the stars represent the children of the STS-100 crew and the future of space exploration. And now you know all about this this wonderful mission that uh, as I con consult my shuttle scroll here, let's look up STS-100 as I look at my scroll. Uh, it lands on May 1st. All right, quite a long mission. STS-100 uh, uh, is up there for 12 days. All right. And today's the first day, and like I said, seven astronauts in Endeavor, OV-105. So, um, hope you enjoy uh, some of our space history as we live the shuttle legacy like none other on video podcasts. So, tell your friends to check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, and Twitch, and they'll be glad they did, and we're open to any suggestions. Marty, in fact, this would be a good time to see who's been watching us today as I'm going to segue into our fabulous weekend. Let me get a little rocket fuel here. Thank you, sir. And we thank Mark Usiak for watching and uh, Chalad Zan, Larry Pushkar, Robert Law. Larry, I understand you may have got a little snow up there in Michigan because my mom in Finley, Ohio, sent me pictures of it. Uh, Cynthia Sotrell. Uh, glad that you're on board, Cynthia. And Dave Stangy is uh, is up there in Michigan. Him and Larry may have been throwing snowballs at each other yesterday. I don't know, Marty. We'll we'll uh, they'll let us know. But we wanted to brag about I'll show you a few pictures of our event, and then we're going to kind of recap it Friday with Triple T, who did a fabulous job doing a, his talk of a couple events of his tales from the White Room. But we can't say enough about Angie. Uh, Roberts there on the left is our finance director and helps Karen with a lot of things. And uh, Connie, hello, Connie McDaniel, surprise. Connie and, uh, we're, and Angie were at our front desk uh, Saturday and taking care of all the good folks. And Angie figures about 250 people walked by her during the whole day's event from 9 to 6. 
And uh, we're grateful of that. And we're grateful for everybody that bought books and T-shirts. And we'll talk more about the leftover T-shirts that will make a deal for you Stay Curious fans out there on Friday. So uh, thank you, uh, Angie. And uh, Angie's our uh, paid employee like myself. And Connie's one of our strong volunteers. Here's looking at uh, the back end of Lee Solid and Gene Schaff, uh, 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 I mean, uh, Dean Schaff, and uh, looking towards the morning crowd there. It was standing room only in the afternoon there uh, in the Hyatt Place conference room there. And we certainly enjoyed a talk in the afternoon with these three gentlemen. That is Mr. Jim Harrington. In the middle is Bob Seek and... Mr. Mike Leinbach, and our Master of Ceremonies, Hugh Harris. Uh, do I have a picture of Hugh in here? No, I don't. Hugh Harris made the comment that these three gentlemen have launched uh, uh, three quarters of all the humans that have less, left Earth since civilization began, was the words he used. Since eternity. Since the what? Since eternity. Since eternity. Yeah. And then the beginning of civilization, we all got a chuckle out of that, uh, thinking about uh, that. So, uh, but a wonderful talk by these gentlemen. It's on YouTube, uh, easy to find. It is the seventh and last in the series of, of talks that we put up there. Thank you, Bruce Jacobs, for getting those up there so quick. There's Trekkie, Techie, and Marty. Thank you, Jessica. She was there to help us with always technical problems with these things. And Marty did a fabulous job. Uh, we thought he and I could do it alone, basically, and boy, did we think wrong because he needed to run the, the camera a lot. And uh, But we had a blast, and uh, it all looks good, so check it out. And we had advertised two astronauts, and we had four show up. Mike McCulley there in, in, uh, to the left, and uh, Winston Scott there in the middle uh, were, of course, advertised, and uh, Nicole Stott, thank you for showing up. We, I kind of knew Nicole was going to be here. But crashing our party was six-time astronaut uh, and that everybody knows, uh, Thor, uh, Story Musgrave. And, uh, how you know, we, we just love it. Story found our celebration of the shuttle. He, both Nicole and Story, were out at Yuri's night under Atlantis to uh, have some fun that evening uh, with another group out there. So, But thank you. Mike McCulley and Winston Scott for all that you do for our humble nonprofit. They definitely are there when we need them for things, as is Nicole. Though she lives in St. Petersburg, you're going to be seeing and hearing more about her as uh, uh, she has embraced our museum in many ways, and we love her to death. And uh, Story Musgrave, age 86 there, one of the most experienced astronauts of the shuttle program. Uh, you're looking at a man that's got three doctorate degrees there and still sharp as a tack. And we got to unveil veil a special uh, uh, art piece of artwork by Tim Gagnon. We'll talk about that more Friday, where Tim has taken the tiles of the Astronauts Memorial, which are this size, and then replicated them in a small traveling version. He would like to see someone buy this and make a traveling uh, wall of the mirror, like a Vietnam wall. You have the, the traveling mirror of our fallen astronaut comrades and that's mike mccully and mr j honeycutt former kennedy space center director making the unveiling there for tim gagnon's beautiful work of art that his grandchildren helped him put the uh, universe milky way on and tim embraced our show so well he's known as the patch guy many of you you stay curious people know tim uh he put together a shuttle fest patch for us to give us an idea of what we might like to do in the future. And we are going to have a future and a shuttle fest too. And uh, so a beautiful patch. I got to point out as you look at this piece of artwork by the patch guy there, he, the A of the, the shuttle creates an A with the, the uh, red, white, and blue vector, if you will, of the shuttle making the A. And then you see the outside circle comes down with our American Space Museum to make Omega symbol. So you have the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, and that just gives, shows you how talented Tim Gagnon is. Uh, as, as, and there's all kinds of levels of art and being a patch guy and patch art and translating 
your thoughts in, in such a simple way is what Tim's all about. And thank you, Tim, for, for putting this together. And yes, you'll probably see it in a patch soon uh, available for sale uh, as we're going to work with Tim in the future on our Shuttle Fest. So we thank you for embracing our Shuttle Fest and embracing the American Space Museum Stay Curious program. And uh, our Stay Curious is going to be booked for April 15th, 2023, at a, at a site to be determined. And we want to thank Christopher Mick. Thank you for watching. Tom Usiak, Space Resources. Uh, oh, uh, Dave Stange says, Larry and I are going to join you next year uh, at Shuttle Fest. And we'll bring, and some, we'll snow. bring some snow. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we do bring some snow. Because you could probably sell it uh, <laughs> and uh, to people, but uh, we appreciate that, folks. Already, we've got two people looking to get their airplane tickets to come down here and enjoy a su shuttle fest. Because we definitely had an A-list event, and we are so blessed that you all have embraced it. This has been a dream of Karen Conklin as her leadership that uh, we we uh, uh, become. Uh, in the front here on the space close, at least, of uh, preserving the birth of the American space age, and then with our STEAM education programs, ignite the future generation of space workers, and we're well on our way to doing it. So thank you all for being here today. Tomorrow we've got Trip Banks with us. He is a space worker that will share his little space career with us, uh, and then he has created a alter ego, I think, of his own, an elephant, a cartoon series for children called Teddy Tusker. So and uh, until tomorrow when you learn a little bit about Teddy Tusker, all right, on Stay Curious, I'm Mark Marquette <laughs> saying that we will see you in our own museum, I hope, someday to bridge the space between us. <laughs>